In this video, we're going to take a look at how to solve the ever popular wind chill problem. This problem is longer and it just looks more complicated than it really is. The trick with all these problems is to take them a little bit at a time. Solve a little bit at a time and they're not bad. Okay, so here we have four terms. First one, easy enough. Uh, second one, okay, we're, going, we're simply going to, the term is plug and chug. You put the numbers in and you solve it. Okay, so we have 0.621 times t. Um, we're going to set t as 25 and v as 8. This will, of course, work no matter what t and v are. Okay, so 0.621 times... 25. This gives us 15.525. Okay, and we're going to do this for our next term. Now this is where a lot of students freak out. They notice, oh, we have an ex a crazy rational exponent up there. How are we going to solve that? Um, this is something you want to use a calculator for either a, a decent uh, scientific calculator. For this class, I would not spend over 10, 15 bucks. Um, honestly, if I were doing this, I wouldn't even bother using a calculator. I would use Google. Use Google as a calculator. Google do, does great for basic calculations. I highly recommend it. For something like this, I would type into Google 35.75 times, little time symbol, little asterisk, um, v, what V? V is 8, so I have 8 to the power of, parentheses, 4 slash 25, close parentheses, equals. Type that in, and it will do the calculation for you. Um, very handy. Some people don't prefer this. There's other online calculators you can use that are also great. Um, that's certainly an option. Let me plug this into my calculator, which happens to be on my phone. 35.75 times 8 to the power of 4 or 25. Power of. Okay, so for this part, I get. 1.39474. And for the total, I get negative 49.862. Pardon my sloppy writing. Now, I'm only writing out three digits here of accuracy. But in practice, I do not round off my numbers until the very end. I've taught physics for a long time. Physics is basically word problems. I have a degree in word problems. <laughs> so, yeah, don't round your numbers until the very end. It just works better. Take my word for it. Okay, so, last one. Do the same, same thing again. Except, of course, you want to change this number, add in a T, plug it in. Um, Find a good calculator or plug it into Google, like I said. So I'm going to type in 0 0.4257 times t. My t is 25. Put that here. Um, my v is 8. Oh, we were to figure out what this was. It's that number right there. That's handy. Um, so. Okay, so for this one I get 14.906. Of course we have a lot more decimals than that. They aren't all necessary or accurate. We know it within three decimal places. Um, two actually. That's all right. Let's not, let's not worry about that. Um, just follow the directions on the problem for what level of accuracy they ask for in the end. Until then, save your digits. 
Okay, so I'm going to add up this number, this number, this number, and this number. Keep in mind, this one's negative. So you just add them up at this point, and that's how you solve the problem. So I get 35.74, add that, subtract that one, add that one. You just add these four numbers up. We can all add four numbers. We can do that. And we get 16.3092. Well, you did the two off, I guess. And that, that probably around that, just around that to point 0.3. But remember, with these kind of problems, they look intimidating. If you can solve a little bit at a time, take just a step closer in each step, that's how you solve the problem. It'll look intimidating and impossible at first. Solve it a bit at a time, you can do it.